Tonight we begin the sacred Paschal Triduum with the Mass of the Lord's Supper. The readings for today are on page 899. Please rise for the processional hymn, number 500, Lift High the Cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Well, happy Holy Thursday, everybody, and the beginning of our Paschal Triduum. A special thanks to Father Blood for joining us in its entirety. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous sorrow. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and the saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, On the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month and then with the whole assembly of Israel present. It will shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it. With your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed had no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that I have, as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. I didn't think that I'd ever meet anybody who loved the priesthood more than me until I met Father Jonathan Patrick Bachman. Because as a new priest, I came in so excited, so excited and so ready to share the, my priesthood and my life with all of you. And then I met him who loved the priesthood in a way different than a guy fresh out of the gate, but as a man who'd been doing it for a while and knew the great treasure he had received. Even during his last days, some of his final words were, 
I just love being a priest. And during my two and a half years with Father Bachland, I heard him multiple times kind of yearn for and talk about this Mass tonight, Holy Thursday, when Jesus gave the priesthood and the Eucharist to the church for the first time. And he never actually got to say a Holy Thursday Mass at a parish because he was always with the bishop. But he'd said many times how he yearned to. And I like to think that, please God, he's here with us kind of praying in a new way, in a special way tonight. The other thing I learned about him very quickly was he loves St. Peter more than anyone that I'd ever met. And not just here, whereas that's true, but the saint. And reading this gospel, it kind of shows us why. Because Peter uh, was the first pope, right, follower of Jesus, but also sometimes a little bit put his foot in his mouth. Because we have here, Jesus begins washing the feet of Jesus, or the, excuse me, Jesus begins washing the feet of the apostles. And one by one, that's happening, and then he gets to Peter. And Peter goes, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus goes, yeah, what I'm doing, you won't understand yet, but later you will. And Peter goes, no, 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 Lord, you could never wash my feet. And Peter says, I need to wash your feet to make you clean. And then Peter says, well, not just my feet, but all of me, Jesus. And you can just see the affection and fondness of Jesus looking at Peter. Peter, I just need to wash your feet, right? Peter getting really excited and kind of going quick. But I think this little story kind of shows us the crux of the priesthood. Because Jesus loves us too much to ever leave us by ourselves. And what's one of the simplest ways that he stays with us? It's the priest. It's me. It's Father Bachlan, Father Blood, right? That's one of the ways he dwells with us. He remains in broken and sinful men so that you will never in your entire life have to be afraid to come to Jesus. Because all of us know what it's like as priests, as people, we know the ups and downs of life and sin just as well as anybody else. But even though we're normal people, there's something very distinct about the priesthood. We're not just guys that went to school for a while, pray a little more than most perhaps, but we've been ordained and consecrated, set apart, to stand in the place of Jesus for the church. And it's such a beautiful life. I couldn't imagine how full and in love with the priesthood I would be. I mean, I dreamed about it a little bit, I guess. But until I lived it, I didn't even realize how good it can be. And the biggest reason is because every day of my life, of Father Blood's life, of Father Bachman's life, we got to bring you Jesus. It's such a privilege and a gift to get to be with every one of you in so many different ways, joyful and difficult, tender moments of life. At all the moments I've gotten to be with people in their final moments, at the hospital, when sometimes fear can be present and we wonder about death, or the final moments of life, and to be able to get somebody ready with the sacraments to come face to face with Jesus for the first time and to go home to the Father. It's a privilege and a gift. Every moment that any of you have entrusted me with some of the petitions in your hearts and your lives, the members of your families that have been sick, people that you're worried about or care for, and I've gotten the gift and the privilege and the honor to take all of those in my own heart and carry them to Jesus, it's a privilege and a gift. The hours that I've gotten to spend grace in the confessional, falling more deeply in love with the church and the priesthood, a privilege and a gift. Every moment I've been able to talk to someone who's struggling with discouragement or despair and remind them of the hopeful tenderness of the mercy of God, a privilege and a gift. To get to bring children into the family of the church through baptism, to get to walk with different couples in their walk towards the sacrament of marriage and walk through the tender, intimate questions that are tied up with holy matrimony, to get to breathe hope into the sorrow of each human heart, and at every funeral mass when we most long for it. It's a gift and a privilege. They get to spend time with couples when marriage is hard, 
and it's a tough season, and to remind them of the beauty that they show us in the world, how Jesus loves us. And sometimes even offer encouragement and ear, maybe a little bit of hope, a privilege, and a gift. To get to spend my whole life introducing you to, bringing you to, pointing you back to Jesus. He who is, who he is, why he made you, and how much he loves you. It's a privilege, a gift, and an honor. I remember there's a, years ago I was looking on Facebook, some of the guys that I was in seminary with got ordained, and he's standing there smiling, and he said, the biggest tragedy in my life right now is I don't have a thousand lives to live as a priest, because it's just so good. But the biggest honor of all of these, every single one of them, honor, wonder, and mystery, is turning ordinary bread and ordinary wine into the body and blood of Jesus Christ. This is the very heart of the priesthood. It's the heart of the church. Priests are here to bring you Jesus in all kinds of different ways. But the biggest one of these daily is the Mass, when we get to bring you Jesus' body and blood. The very heartbeat, heartbeat of the priesthood in the church happens on this altar. It's what our whole lives want to revolve around, right? And to be honest, it's what our hearts were made for to begin with. St. John Vianney used to say that it'd be easier for the world to go on without the Son than without the Mass, without the Eucharist. Why? Because the Eucharist at this altar is Jesus. The more we worship Jesus, present here in the tabernacle, present here in every sacrifice of the Mass, the more our lives become Eucharistic. The lighter, the freer, and the more joyful of people that we're going to be. No matter what's going on in our lives, no matter the brokenness, no matter the pain or the suffering and the questions that we carry in the depths of our bones and our hearts, the more we run to Jesus in Holy Communion, the more our whole life is going to look different. I was praying this morning about like, Jesus, this is such a great day. We have the Eucharist and the priesthood. I get to see all of my brothers and I get to be here. Thank you for this gift of the Eucharist. I just heard back in the quiet of my heart, you know, it did cost me everything. That's how much he loves us. It cost him everything to be here with us each day on this altar. And so my invitation is this Holy Thursday, thank him for that gift. The word Eucharist in and of himself means thanksgiving for the most precious body and blood of Jesus. So as we approach Holy Communion this Holy Thursday night when the church gives us the priesthood and the Eucharist, when you go back to your pews and you have just a couple moments of quiet or of singing and prayer before we start processing Jesus to the back, I invite you just in the quiet of your heart with all that you have and are to whisper the words, thank you, Jesus. I love you too.
mother would like those who didn't their feet washed this month.
please stand for the prayers of the faithful. Heavenly Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers always, and we offer you our petitions. For the church on earth, that we may be guided to a greater understanding of the perfect love and service of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those in positions of power and influence in the world, that they may understand something of the spirit of Christ's sacrifice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those confronted by temptation, that they may be strengthened by Christ's example of loyalty to his Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all of us in this community, that more and more we may reflect in our lives the Eucharistic love of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all the dead, may the angels and saints lead them swiftly to their Heavenly Father's embrace. And for John Vasquez, for whom this Holy Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, in your mercy, hear us and your kindness answer you. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of the sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you an eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, and the blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day in which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. 
on the day before he was to suffer, for our salvation and the salvation of all that is today. He took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, the place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with light, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever.
at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit, let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am worthy that you should enter the world. Lord, save us from the Is the body that will be given up for you. This is the chalice of the new covenant in my blood, says the Lord. Do Shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? The chalice of salvation I will take off. I will call on the Lord's name. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving. And I will call upon the Lord's name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, 
is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. This is the body that will be given up for you. This is the chalice of thy
Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, that we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever.
the Blessed Sacrament will remain out in the altar of repose from now until about 11 p.m. I invite you to come out, pray for a little bit with our Lord in the silence during his agony in the garden. 